thinking of. That's because yeah. I'm Tyler Hoover. Yeah, I mean, you're you're passable, I guess. I mean, but with this, uh, now that all the cars are going for over two hundred thousand dollars, I mean, there's nothing stopping me from yeah, buying so, you a car. Except for your life. True. Oh, there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the bell of the ball. A Prius, a Prius at Barrett Jackson. What's up, everybody? My name is Elliot, and as you can tell from all of the commotion behind me, I am at the Barrett Jackson in Scottsdale, Arizona right now. It is an absolute zoo. It's a total circus, but it is awesome. And while all these other cars are gonna get a ton of coverage, what I wanna focus on today are some of the more bizarre, weird, and interesting cars that I think you guys will really enjoy and might not get as much TV coverage as uh, some of these big boys. So let's get to it. Okay, so as I said, it's kind of a circus, more like a state fair once you're outside here. It's all funnel cake stands, barbecue stands. It's really similar to a circus, but inside each one of these tents are some of the less known cars, some of the cars that sell on Tuesdays and Thursdays and stuff. And those are the ones that are usually the most interesting to me. So let's go take a look and see what we can find in some of these outlier tents. Starting with this, this is a 2002 Celine Thunderbird. And you might think, well, I've seen Celine Mustangs. I've never seen a Celine Thunderbird. And that's because they only made one. This is the result of kind of a trial with Celine. And uh, they built it for Ford to show them what they could do. And apparently when Thunderbird production got limited, the Celine contract got canceled. But this thing is awesome. It's been swapped with a 4.6 liter three valve Mustang engine. It really looks cool. It's got a hard tonneau cover. It's got like a little spoiler. It's got, you know, as upgraded as things could be for 2002, but it's just neat. You never see custom Thunderbirds and that sold for $62,000 at auction. And that's just one of these weird outlier cars that you see around these tents so let's see what else we can find the next car i wanted to show you is more of a classic but this is a 1957 studebaker golden hawk now they make the studebaker hawk which looks very similar to this but this is the golden hawk which is the performance model and in the 50s they kind of build this as a family sports car and while it looks really really cool and i love the fins it's just a really good looking car the thing that's special about this is it's powered by a supercharged v8 yes back in 57 they made a supercharged V8 from the factory. Really, really cool. And on the staging lanes a couple of days ago, I actually had the privilege of fiddling with the hood and seeing the engine here. And it's got this Paxton supercharger right on top. It is really, really cool. I've always wanted one of these and I'm almost sad to see that it went for like 60 grand because these were not that expensive that long ago. But it's gorgeous to see one of these cars in person and very cool if you read up on them. Now, here's something weird. It's kind of this stumpy car. I actually don't know what this is yet. I just came over here for the Corvette, but now I want to know what the little chode mobile is. It says it's a Nash, probably isn't. Uh, weird doors, an RX Nash. So it says it's a Nash Metropolitan, but if you've ever seen one of those cars, this is certainly not one of those. According to the info tag, it's actually built on a Mazda RX-7 chassis. So that's why it's called the RX Nash. Apparently it's a rotary powered Nash Metropolitan that somebody went nuts with the fiberglass on. That is pretty neat. And surprisingly, it only sold for uh, $26,000, which is, I mean, fairly reasonable for Bear Jackson prices. Now here's a car that immediately caught my attention, a C4 Corvette. Now this one's a 1984, which is widely regarded as the worst year of the C4. But then I started to notice the paint's really not all that great and it's kind of missing its front cover plate. And then I read the description tag and apparently this 1984 Corvette has been on fire and is now a salvage title car. Now in my entire career of coming to Barrett Jackson's, I don't remember them selling salvage title cars, but this salvage title worst year of the C4 still sold for $9,000. That is insane. 84 Corvettes were three and $4,000 cars uh, up until apparently Wednesday. That's, that's nuts. Now here's another one I don't remember at Barrett Jackson's past. A 2006 Range Rover Supercharged with 24 inch wheels. And then you read the description and it's been in two accidents. It's just a used car. Somebody had to pay a seller's fee to list it here. And then somebody had to pay a buyer's fee to buy it. I, I don't get it. I don't remember these being here. Okay, in this tent, I've stumbled upon an absolute gold mine and they're all really close to each other. Behind me, this weird thing is a 1983 HM freeway three wheel motor car. Very, very weird car. It's got a spare tire in the back seat. We have a naturally aspirated PT Cruiser on like American racing wheels, but it's a manual and it has pillar gauges. And of course it's got all the other typical boomer mods. 100% Jake would love this thing. It's really crazy to see a naturally aspirated stick shift PT Cruiser that's been modified. Over here we have a Cushman 
with a spoiler. Look at this thing. This is wild. Gotta love spoilers on stuff, but it doesn't stop there. Here's a Cushman with like a worthless tow bar thing. Then for the real cars, there's a 1996 collector's edition C4 and a 1986 pace car Corvette. This was the first year you could get the Corvette in a convertible again, and they celebrated by pacing the Indy 500. There is a Shelby Dodge Dakota, a Lotus Europa, which are very cool, very short. My kneecap is about up to there. The cherry on top for me. They have a 1995 Indy Pace car convertible. I actually really, really like these. It's one of the few Pace cars that I would actually own. But by far, my absolute favorite car in here is this 1992 Corvette ZR1. And I know it doesn't look hardly any different than the other C4s I just showed you. Only differences are this little badge right here these way wider wheels, and the third brake light on top. Those are pretty much the only ways to distinguish this ZR1 from the plebeian 1992 Corvettes like mine. But little did you know, these were double the price of a standard Corvette, and they offered 405 horsepower by this point. I absolutely love red. My dad had one very similar to this when I was growing up, and this is just a really cool car. And surprisingly, sold for $37,000, which means these are coming into their own value-wise. I better snatch one of these up before they get totally unobtainable. Let's go see what else we can find. Oh, now this gets my early 2000s blood going. This is an XLR, but not just any XLR, it's an XLR V. Now they barely made any of these and it features the supercharged version of the North Star V8. This was the one to have and I remember touring the Corvette factory back in the early 2000s when they were actually making these and they are made in the same factory. They only made apparently 410 XLR Vs and this one sold for like $45,000. So obviously they still hold their value pretty well and it's just such a good looking car. I think people would have a hard time believing that it wasn't brand new. It is a handsome car that has aged well and is basically a Corvette. Love seeing that. This is a 1955 Corvette and as you know we have a 1954 Corvette. They look practically identical but the one way you can tell on the outside is the 1955 Corvettes have a big V here and that's because this was the first year for Corvettes that you could get a V8. Yes 53 and 54 were only available with straight sixes but this 55 has the V8. Of course this one also has a, uh, a hard top and there are a lot of aftermarket companies that made that so I'm not really sure how authentic that is but this one just looks gorgeous. According to its tag it sold for 85 grand which is just about right for one of these. Really cool to see one of these even though I do see one on a weekly basis. <laughs> and over here even though you can't see it behind the people we have like a Fast and the Furious Tribute Supra. Of course, it's not one that was used on the screen or anything like that, but it is cool to see one kind of made up to look like it was, and well, Supers are always neat. Of course, you can tell this one wasn't screen used because it's right-hand drive, but man, everything else is pretty darn spot on. That would be your cars and coffee magnet right there. That's the one if you're below 30, that's the car you want. Now you may have noticed that I've got a lanyard on and that's because I have a bidder's pass. Now I've been going up on stage as often as I can because it's just a dream come true. I watch the auction on TV all the time. So to be able to like be up there in the middle of the action is unlike anything else. Like I said, the audio is just kind of impossible to play, but just being right there and hearing those numbers and seeing the auctioneers up close, it's just neat. It's an experience that you really can't get anywhere else, even at any other auction. It's just not the same bustle. But, of course, this whole thing is an event more than an auction. Speaking of oddball things you see around the Barry Jackson, look who I stumbled upon. It's Mr. Hoover himself. The traitor. How dare you? I worked another auction not competing. How dare you? I was not competing. And now I'm just basically on vacation and you're, you're working. It's, uh... It's something. I'm finally able to kind of relax and take it all in. I don't have to like write down and memorize things word for word so I can actually, you know, enjoy it. But it's still busy enough to where I don't have the bidders pass out. And bit, speaking of... That's because yeah. I'm Tyler Hoover. Yeah. I mean, you're you're passable, I guess. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm four or five years older than you, but then you look like four or five years older than me. It's so, the grays. You know, I mean, Anderson Cooper looks really good, you know. That's, I'm <laughs> the silver, you know, what do they call them? Silver, silver boxes. boxes. I mean, yeah. Yeah. But with this, uh, now that all the cars are going for over $200,000, I mean, there's nothing stopping me from yeah, buying except, you a car. Except for your life. True. All right. Well, I will let you get back to your actual professional broadcasting career. All right. See you, man. <laughs>
All right, and speaking of other Wichita, Kansas YouTubers, look who else I found, another Tyler. This is Tyler Potter. If you're not familiar with him, I'll have a link to his channel in the description. He's awesome, go check him out. He's got a lot of cool stuff and he's doing a lot of cool stuff. But uh, he's gonna help me find some of these more weird, normal cars. Interesting, Yeah. It's normal? Things that you wouldn't think would be at a bear tax. That you don't see go through on TV. They're all the stuff that goes through earlier in the week that I guess I had no clue came to Barrett Jackson. Earlier in the week or certainly during commercial breaks. Exactly, yeah. Uh, this is one that I thought was interesting. It was this like a 92 Ford Super Duty that has 2,000 miles on it. I mean, the paint is amazing and it doesn't have, you know, a bed. It's one of those, what do you call these? Uh, uh, chassis. chassis cabs. Yep. And I mean, you can't hide any of the condition. I mean, it's, it is what it is. Every single thing shows like it has 2,000 miles on it. I mean, it's amazing. It is very cool and special. Is this something you buy at Barrett Jackson? Is this something somebody collect? I don't know, but it's certainly the cleanest one I've ever seen. Original dry rotted tires. Oh yeah, that? look at that. That's 1992 right Numbers there. Numbers matching. And then your spare. It's almost assembly <laughs> required. <Yeah. laughs> All right, and over here we have a 1998 Monte Carlo pace car, which at first I was kind of like, Mm, what's this doing here? But then we saw harnesses and the real light bar. I read the description. Apparently, it was actually used in the race. It's a real thing. And the interesting part, the orange is not a sticker. That's actual paint. Tasmanian Devil back here is, is a vinyl decal. But kind of interesting. Not your typical Bear Jackson car. And speaking of that, like a 1990 Lexus LS400 in really, really nice shape. Not a bad car but bizarre to see here. Not, not what I think of <laughs> at Barrett Jackson. Just a num normal Hummer H2 with aftermarket wheels and what looks like a failed rear suspension. That pumps back up before it goes across the auction block. These cars are the ones that I would want for here because these are like Sunday cars that go for no money, an SL55 and then two 645s. And what ends up happening is these are just kind of normal weird used cars that go on Sunday after everyone's hung over and everyone leaves. And these will go like accidentally for like $5,000. I mean, these are fine cars, uh, drive them home, but they often get lost under the cracks here. And that's always been that way. I feel like there's always been cheap SL 500s and SL 55s. Right, so moving on here, we have a Buick Rayada, which is yeah, pretty cool. Those are becoming collectible, but look what's next to it. A 1990 Dodge Colt. With the American oh, flag well, on yeah, the front. as you should. According to the tag here, 30,000 original miles, and it's just, I mean, somebody saved this. It's basically a Geo Metro to the point where it even just says imported for Dodge. I gotta say, it is the most clean one I've ever seen, if I've ever seen I one. I was gonna say it's the only one I've ever seen. And the owner's very proud here. He's got a picture of the interior and a blurry picture. And of if the you interior. look, it, it is a Mitsubishi engine in the Dodge. Oh, well, yeah, Colt. It was imported yeah. by them. Oh, there it is. Ladies and gentlemen, the bell of the ball. A Prius. A Prius at Barrett Jackson. It's finally happening. Prius collectors rejoice. Our time has come. It's tastefully modified even. Really? You got oh. clear bra here to protect from- Oh yeah, from when you gouge down. Gouging with higher your... than the door <laughs> handle even. Uh, this is amazing. What is this, a 2014? It is a 16. Oh. Yes. What is this doing here? What is it not doing here? It's tr oh, uh, true. I mean, as a Prius ambassador, I don't know why this isn't yeah. going up on the block right now. Also included is all four wheels, all just equally curb rash oh. all the way around. Oh it's my gosh. We've got a wiring harness issue. Oh, damage report, damage report, and damage report. It's only been crashed a few times. <laughs> it's been crashed multiple times. This is fantastic. This, this is one I'm gonna have to put a bid in on because out of principle, oh. Oh, yeah, well, somebody, or they did. It's been crashed again. Yep. And I don't even know how you chip this. Well, there you go. That's probably my favorite car uh, at the auction because never in my life did I ever think I'd see a Prius anywhere near here. It's a once in a lifetime, no. you know, event. There aren't even Priuses in the parking lot here. No. It, this is wild. It's I can't wait to see what that goes for. I hope it's not more than I think it will I be. hope it's not more than $5,000. Because <laughs> I think you looked it up, it was like 200 and... 207,000 miles on the odometer. So That's a lot a, for a 16. 16 with 207. That's, that got driven. Yeah. Wow. Okay, well, there we go. That's my favorite car out of everything. And I've seen them all. <laughs> Here's another interesting one. What appears to be some sort of Ferrari 400i limo, complete with dust. I don't know if this is real at all, but definitely 
something unique. Uh, <laughs> somebody put clean me on the windshield. And then apparently some sort of Suburban that was used in a Steven Seagal movie, as you can see him sneaking out from around that fire extinguisher there. It was in Lawman, everyone's favorite movie. That you've never heard of. <laughs> yeah. Now take a look at this Cayenne. It's not exactly normal. It's really cool. You can tell it's been like safari It's got a kayak and some jerry cans up top. It actually looks really, really cool. Some could say he even took some inspiration from Ed Bolian's Car Trek Cayenne. But it really makes me wonder what this will go for. Uh, I don't know. It's a GTS. It is kind of interesting. It already looks like it's been through Car Trek because the headlights are full of water. Oh, yeah. Correct. So that's, that's very authentic. Yes. Maybe he took it off roading. Uh, my question is if it comes with the kayak, because I think it's going to be a rip if you buy this thing and you don't get the jerry cans or the kayaks or the paddles. And does it come with fuel in the can so you can get home with that wind sail on the roof <laughs> killing your gas? That's, that's a good question. All right, well, I think we've shown enough of the normal cars here and special cars at the Barrett Jackson. Uh, I think we're going to wrap the video up. Be sure to follow Tyler Potter's channel. I'll have a link to that in the description below. And uh, you know all my social media stuff, Instagram, Facebook, Facebook group. It's a fun yep. place. Uh, and I will see you guys back in Wichita.